On today's video, I'll be showing you a quick tutorial on how to brace. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have all of your supplies. Obviously, you want your gauges. You're going to want your oxygen and acetylene tanks. Make sure they're full. Here we have our nitrogen. Make sure your nitrogen is full. And we're also going to be using a regulator. Here we have our vacuum. We also have a bucket of water and we have a few rags. You want to make sure that you have your fittings. Here I have my leak detector. This is going to be my heat absorbing gel, sandpaper, as well as your refrigerant. We also have our pipe cutters and our crescent wrench. Obviously the crescent wrench is to make any adjustments that you need for your tanks and your pipe cutters are to cut your lines. Make sure to remove the Schrader valves from your service valves both on the high and the low side. If you start brazing with these inside there's a little gasket right here and that will melt. Next you want to remove any power to your condenser pull the disconnect. Safety is very important. Turn the breaker to the off position. This will ensure that we have removed any power coming from our breaker. Before we start, we want to prep our lines. Make sure that you take your sandpaper. We want to clean these pipes before we start the process. Be very careful. You don't want to get any contamination into the lines. You don't want any of the debris or any moisture to get in the line. So just be very careful while you're doing this procedure. Once you finish cleaning the lines, go ahead and take a rag and wipe down the lines. Make sure that you also use the sandpaper to clean your fittings as well. So here, right now, I connect my gauges. I'm going to start on my high side and we're going to be using nitrogen as we're brazing to keep any oxidation inside the pipe. I put my rag here, this is going to protect my valves from overheating. So right now I'm just going to make sure that both of my gauges are closed, make sure all my connections are tight. So here I have my regulator. And we're going to slowly crank on the nitrogen and here on the regulator there's a little ball and we basically want to be anywhere between 2 and 5 psi while we're brazing. I'm going to open my high side and we're going to make our adjustments here. I'm just going to close it and as I said anywhere between 2 and 5 will be fine. Prep our acetylene and oxygen. Here we're going to turn on our oxygen and our acetylene. You can open up your oxygen. Your acetylene, you don't have to open it all the way. So right now it's closed. We're going to barely crack it open. When you're setting your pressures, you are going to have to open up your lines. And this is going to allow the pressure to go through and then make your adjustments as needed. I have my acetylene set to 5 PSI. You can see the inside number where it says PSI and my oxygen is set to 15. Again, be very careful when you're using your torches. Make sure you have the proper safety gear as well as a bucket of water and or a fire extinguisher available. Right now we have our torch tank set, we have the nitrogen pressure set, we have our wet rag set, so now we're ready to start brazing. Now one of the tips to brazing is you want to make sure that you're heating up the pipe and you're moving slowly. You want to make sure that you have a nice distance. You don't want to be too close because then you can pop up, uh, make a hole inside of the line. Keep a nice distance, just move your flame around slowly. And basically what I explain to people is, you're not trying to heat up the silver, you're trying to heat up the pipe. If you're heating up the pipe, you're gonna, with your other hand, just you're gonna keep on tapping the connection here that you want to seal. And as it heats up on the pipe, the silver will melt and it will basically go all the way around. So you wanna just be, as I said, patient. You don't wanna hold the flame here over the silver. You wanna basically just heat up the pipe back and forth and then you want to keep on tapping your connection. 
here we're gonna need our igniter so once we open the acetylene we're gonna spark it and then make our adjustments for the oxygen turn on now we're brazing the high side so we're gonna open up our high side I light it you don't want a crazy flame you want it a little more controlled and secondly you don't want to see a lot of black smoke at the end we're gonna slowly open our oxygen you want to make sure when you're brazing that you have a nice blue flame right now we're just gonna heat up the pipe as it's heating up I'm gonna take the silver and I'm gonna tap the connections Once you finish brazing, you want to go ahead and now we're going to check the system for leaks. I have my gauges set up on my high and my low side. Now we're going to use our nitrogen to do a leak check. Once you set the pressures on your nitrogen tank, you can go ahead and open both your high and your low side. Obviously, you're going to have your port here connected to your nitrogen. Open up the nitrogen. You can always check here your low and your high pressures. We have our leak check. And basically we're just going over the fittings and connections. You just want to make sure that you're checking it thoroughly going all the way around. A lot of times if there is a leak and you do have nitrogen in the system, the line will actually start to bubble up. Almost like when the kids have the little bubbles and they would blow through it you'll see bubbles start to form on the connections. So right now, we don't have any leaks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the Schrader valves that we took out and put new Schrader valves before we start our vacuum. Connect your gauges to your condenser. Make sure your connections are nice and tight. Turn on your vacuum. Open up your high and your low side. One last thing I do want to mention, whenever you do cut open your line sets, you want to make sure that you install a liquid line filter dryer. You can see here, you always want the arrow on the dryer pointing towards your metering device. The reason we didn't put it on this system is because this Goodman actually comes with a filter dryer next to the compressor. You can see it right there. It's a blue filter dryer. Once you finish pulling your vacuum, you want to go ahead and turn your vacuum off. You want to wait to see if your gauges move on your metering device. Once you finish with your vacuum, go ahead and charge your system up. Make sure when you're charging up your system that you charge it with the proper refrigerant. You can always go to the tag and you can see here that it is supposed to be 410A refrigerant. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.